keep it fun. That's the other thing that I have to say is you got to keep it fun because if it starts to be too stressful or, you know, you start to make it um, just too much of a, a stressful thing, then it's, you take the fun out of it, then then what, you know, then you're just a stressful agent. Who wants to go look at houses with a stressful agent? <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be an experience. So the question is this, how do most agents find the secrets to succeed in today's competitive real estate market, especially when the top agents are keeping those secrets to themselves? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Amuchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Hey, Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui, and I'm interrupting myself to bring you this commercial break from one of our sponsors. There's somebody I've been looking at for a long time, and when they reached out to me, I said, yes, we have to be able to do this deal. So that sponsor is Follow Up Boss. There's a lot of superstars out there that use Follow Up Boss. What's your favorite CRM? We're using Follow Up Boss. We use Follow Up Boss. So we use Follow Up Boss. I love Follow Up Boss. I love it. We have action plans now for bringing on new agents. We have action plans for our recruiting. Uh, we call them action plans and follow-up boss, which will trigger tasks for the agents to do as far as calling. Follow-up boss, I like more for the integrations with everything, MailChimp, call action, all those different products. I will say we used Sync and we switched from Sync to follow-up boss. Honestly, the greatest CRM I've ever used, I've used Brivity, Sync. I've looked at Boomtown, like Real Geeks, just a bunch of different ones. But me personally, I fell in love with Fub about like seven months ago when I first started using it. I've used Boomtown, I've used Line Desk, I've used Conversion, and I think Follow Up Boss gives you the most integrations mm -hmm. that are simple, and it gives you the best ability to go and integrate large things into one single solitary platform, yet at the same time, it's still affordable. I do like Follow Up Boss better just because it you can text from the app and things like that. It's just a little more convenient for me. Um, it tracks everything that I need. I can customize it if I want. If I want to go smart list based, that's fine. If I want to go task based, it's fine. I think it's one of the best systems and it's very user friendly. It just really helps me never drop a ball because it, it's so user friendly. I don't have a one horse in the race of Follow Up Boss, purely objective. Follow Up Boss has been the best one that we've found. Now I've used Follow Up Boss. We've actually used it in our non real estate businesses as well because it's so good at being able to set timers, set automatic texting and emailing. So here's what we got. For Real Estate Rockstars listeners, you get a 30 day free trial. That's normally 14 days. So in order to get this, you go followupboss.com, just like it sounds, forward slash rockstars. Go there, get your 30 day free trial and check it out. Especially if you aren't using any systems or any CRMs yet, this will be a great one for you to start with. Thanks again. Now back to our show. What's up, real estate rock stars? This is Stephanie Heiser filling in for Erin Amuchastegui. And today I get to interview Jen Martell from Riverside, California. I have been totally looking forward to interviewing her and begging her to get the courage to come on and tell her secrets because I know from following her on social media and from our connection that she is so amazing and has so much to offer. So Jen, what's up? Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. And hi, everybody listening. Thank you so much. I'm excited as well. And I look forward to chatting with you today. <laughs> awesome. So tell us like, what's your name? What's your style? Where are you from? Like, how'd you get into real estate? All right. So I am Jennifer Martell, but I, everyone has always called me Jen. And my dad had always, and my family has always called me Jen Jen. So I just like the flow of Jen Jen real estate. So everything's always Jen Jen real estate. I do Jen Jen real estate.com. So Jen Jen is, um, but my name is Jen. I go by Jen. Um, I did start uh, as an agent about 18 years ago, my mom was a broker. So she was a broker. I got my license. I was working with her and we were out at uh, Canyon Lake here in, I'm in Riverside. I live here in Riverside. Canyon Lake is a lake kind of here nearby us a little bit more South than where I'm at. And I started doing real estate with her and it was very, uh, just part-time. I had little ones at the time. So I was kind of dipping into it with her. 
And that was in about 2003. And then when the market crashed in 2008, I just got a bad taste in my mouth for real estate. It wasn't my favorite. My kids were little toddlers at the time. So I just went a different direction. My mom ended up selling her office. So I went a different direction. But uh, then I got back into it about five years ago. Uh, My broker now, I was working with him as his bookkeeper accountant. And he's like, why aren't you doing real estate again? You are so good with people. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to renew my license and do it. And it was the best decision I ever made. (laughs) That's really fun. And now I can tell you have an office and I know you are in a really super cool spot. So tell us like where you're posted up and why and how that um, contributes to your real estate. Okay, so the office that I am in right now is at my sister's restaurant. She owns a cafe here in Riverside. It's at an airport. It's the Riverside Airport. And so she is she owns the Riverside Airport Cafe. And this is an office here in the cafe. So she has owned the restaurant for she's going on her fourth year now. And she has, um, she has hit me up to come and help her to run the restaurant and do things for her here in the office. And so I come here and I also can do my real estate out of here. So what I started doing here at the cafe, which was triggered by listening to you on Real Estate Rockstars, Stephanie, uh, you totally triggered something in me that I'm so grateful for. And what I started doing here at the cafe, because you were talking about how um, finding your or kind of following your authentic self and who you are and what you're into. And yours was baseball and you had done the baseball themed uh, thing with your real estate business. And so I'm like, you know what? I really love and everything right now with my family is my sister's cafe. And there's so many people that love the cafe and come here. I wanted them to know who Jen Jen Real Estate was. So what I did was I set up a bookshelf here, started with the kiddos, and I wanted to have books for the kids to have and read. And it was all courtesy of Jen Jen Real Estate and candy on the bookshelf. So the parents are getting candy there. The kids are getting books. Everybody's happy. And it's just in their head that it's from Jen Jen Real Estate. So I've been doing that here at the cafe. Then um, I've also been doing, we have plans to do um, like a Kona ice truck here at the cafe. That's going to be courtesy of Jen Jen Real Estate. I do hot cocoa here. And so that's courtesy of Jen Jen Real Estate. So I just had to, I wanted to work with what I was loving. I loved it here at the cafe, which is what's behind me. I'm here in the little office here at the cafe. Um, I can hear everyone cleaning the dishes and doing everything in the background. So it's cool, but it's all the customers and the traffic that's coming through here that I wanted them. I wanted to be a part of them and I wanted to know, you know, meet everybody. And it's been wonderful. It's been going really, really good for me. Everyone knows maybe they're not like, Hey, I want to buy a house or right away, but they know who I am and they know what I do. And that's all I could ask for at this point. So yeah, that's a really great way to build rapport and build relationships in such an authentic and genuine way. Yeah. And I bet you also get to meet a ton of people coming in and out of the airport too. And I know it's hard for listeners to visualize because they haven't been there, but I have one of the best days of my life and the oh. airport, it's really small. It's super cute. And then Jen's office is in the little like hallway right between the cafe and the airport. So she has the best of both worlds and has the use of the lobby space where people are waiting for their private planes to come. And then there's all the like pilots and training, right? So it's also a school. So you're just meeting all kinds of cool people. I would love to just work at that cafe and have fun and then to incorporate real estate on top of it and help your sister grow her business. So she's owned it for four years. And um, so it sounds like you have a family of entrepreneurs. 
Yes, yes. She owns the cafe. Then I have, um, she's my middle sister. I'm the oldest. And then my little sister is a um, an escrow officer here in town. So her and I do real estate and everything together. And she's an amazing escrow officer. So yeah, we are all in, you know, business. Some of you were working together, you know, I'm working with the restaurant sister and doing everything here. And then with my escrow sister and working together with her. So it all ties together beautifully. Uh, but what I do want to share with anyone listening to is even before I started working here at the restaurant, just my sister owning it was a way for me to just kind of hone in on hey, there's people coming through there all the time. I want to put something there. But I, I've done that even at my, caf, um, my coffee shop. I have a little coffee shop here in town that I love. And I've asked them, can I have like, you know, little things here? Like I want to, um, I have my cards and stuff. I started with that there. But then anytime I have, you know, something that I want to promote or if I want to tell them that, you know, I'm going to be, um, sometimes I'll go hang out at this little park where my son will play at. And if I want to just have, you know, people come by and visit, oh, Jen Jen's going to be over here. If you live in the neighborhood, come on by and she can do a, f- a free analysis on your home or anything like that. So um, my coffee shop, I use that also. And I don't know the owners or anything there, but I go in there all the time. So I'm like, okay, they know me. Let me just, you know, put little things out there, like little um, business cards or a little flyer or whatever it is that I'm doing, have that out there too. So they've been really receptive to that as well. So even before, you know, I started working here, it was like I was still trying to get myself into this restaurant that was very successful and there was a lot of traffic coming through. I wanted them to just know, like, I wanted to be the name, the Jen Jen name that they thought about. Um, and also, let me touch, sorry, on my little cartoon character. So, Stephanie, also, you gave me the idea of the little cartoon character that I think is always fun because I'm not good with selfies. To sit and do a selfie of myself, I feel so <laughs> like, what are you doing, Jennifer? You're so silly. But the cartoon character that looks just like me is a good way for people to still have a visual in a fun way. So I put that out here too. So people have a visual on people like to see each other. So it was a really fun way to not just have my name out there, but also put the visual of myself. So they know that I'm a real person, not just a robot or, you know, (laughs) that's a really good point. And definitely a little tip for those of you that are like me and Jen, that, just don't want maybe your face all over the place. And, and I mean, for me specifically, like I have this darn autoimmune issue and my weight fluctuates a lot. And I swear I look like different to me. And I could have like a for sale sign with my face. And then I show up on a bad day when I'm all swollen and like had massive water retention. And, you know, I'm like, and a heavier set, you know, my weight, I like, I fluctuate like between 70 pounds, like different sometimes. It's really crazy. So Sometimes you're real hungry, huh? <laughs> yes. And sometimes I just have a really high thyroid and sometimes it's really low. So, but even I think without that issue, I just don't want to be the face. And we always joke about like, realtor headshots and how, you know, there'll be glamour shots and then they show up. And when you're like, yeah. So, you know, (laughs) you don't want to be like catfishing people, but the cartoon is the perfect way. So I got mine for, I think it was like $35 on Etsy and it's perfect. It's so simple. So anything you guys ever need, just go to Etsy. My logo, I have my Joshua Tree logo and my logo for my new market in Visalia, it was $12. Like on Etsy, I told the artist my vision and she brought it to life. It was so, it was just perfect. And then with my cartoon image and it's on my email signature and on my social media and on like the posters at my husband's jujitsu, yes. you know, like it's just that it's a, I guess a safety net for me, but it's 30 bucks. I sent them a picture of me. 
you answer multiple choice questions. Do you want to be wearing pants or a skirt or a dress or yes. do you want <laughs> your phone in your hands? Like, yes, I do. Because I always have phones. We all and do. Yes. Yeah. And so yours, you're standing up and you have your logo next to it as well. And your logo is yeah. also like a symbol of your local area. So you're branded through and through and like the community lady, like you're everywhere. Yes. And that's what I wanted. And that's what I took was I wanted because Riverside, we're known for our Riverside Bell. So I wanted the Riverside Bell in my logo with a heart above it and it's with a house and everything surrounding it. So I wanted my cartoon to just be there holding the Riverside Bell that everyone here in Riverside knows. That's what we're known for is our Riverside Bell. So It is a fun way to brand yourself and to have something that when people see it, they think of you. So that's the beauty of the logo and the cartoon character. So I just think it just makes it fun and it takes you outside of the normal just selfie, you know, that normal headshot. So it's just a fun way to to label yourself and brand yourself. So it was fun. Yeah, that is a great idea. And another thing I do when I have to have my face on stuff Like I always like to wear fun and funky and colorful clothes and some of my headshots I've worn, you know, the black and white and done the suit jacket and been more professional, but you can tell I feel much better and much happier, like in my blue polka dot Kate Spade sweater. Like I just try to have, you know, like differentiate and I don't even know if it's like intentional. I just know when I'm being myself and not trying to be how I'm supposed to be, yes, that things just work out so much better. And I don't have to remember scripts or what I'm supposed to say or supposed to do. I'm just myself and you can take it or leave it. I don't care. Like <laughs> People appreciate that. That's what we are all humans. That we, that's what we love is to interact with people and it not feel robotic or scripted it just let's just two people hanging out or three or four people whatever it is and that's when I am best and I agree with you I'm a flip-flop gal I like to be in my flip-flops in my my spandex like on my leggings I guess I should say and I just want to be chill you know I don't want to be dressed up and that's fine sometimes dressing up is appropriate but I have a different approach and it's what works for me. So, you know, I don't want anyone to feel threatened by me or, you know, I'm in being overpowerful and how I'm dressed. I just, I'm chill. I'm cool. I'm just hanging out with you guys. Let's go look at some houses. So it's what's worked for me. It just feels better. And anything that feels natural and authentic, like we've talked about, it just, it just feels better. So, (laughs) so what is some advice you would give yourself? Like, what do you wish you knew your first year of real estate that you know now? Well, okay. So my first year in real estate, cause that was so long ago, I always say the big game changer between when I was an acting agent years ago, when my mom was a broker, and then I dipped out and came back in now, the big difference to me is social media. Social media wasn't around. uh, Well, yeah, almost 19 years ago that I got my license, we didn't have social media or anything like that. So social media is just my advice to agents coming in, you need to spread the word. And that's what I started doing, just always doing a post on my social media pages, just letting people know, This is what I'm doing or show them where I'm at. Hey, I'm at this house showing property with these awesome people. Look at and just where I'm at and what I'm doing. So it was just always, that's all everyone ever knew that I was always out, you know, showing houses or listing a house or doing an open house Um, and not, you know, um, drowning people in it because, you know, it's like I do other things too. But letting them see me and who I am and what I do. I post things about music. I love music. So I do posts about music. My kids, of course. My dog, you know, when I'm out working out, working out is a huge thing for me. I love doing cycling. So anything that's a feel good to me, I want it to be a feel good to everybody else. So I like to post things constantly. And then within my um, circle of things that I like to post. I like to post about my real estate, but that's how people are going to know. That's how they know what I do. They know what, you know, they know that I just worked out last night. I was at the gym. They, they know what, that my daughter just graduated. They know because everyone's on social media seeing all these things. So they need to know what I do and I do real estate. 
So I've, I've gotten messages from people that I haven't talked to in years, but we're friends on social media that are like, oh, my mom's wanting to sell their house. And I know that you're an agent. Do you think you can help mom? Okay, I would love to help mom. But that never happened 18 years ago because there wasn't social media. So the friend, the, the coworker I had from, you know, the job I had 15 years ago, I lost contact with that person. But, you know, because of social media, we all are able to intertwine and see each other. So that's how a person, you know, I'm just giving an example, but that particular person, that's how they knew, okay, let me have mom call Jen. Jen was always so cool. Let me have you connect with mom. So that's my big thing is being comfortable and familiar, familiar with putting posts and stuff on social media, letting everybody know what you do. I think that's a big key. Yeah. And I think when you're a brand new agent, you can, um, you should be holding a bunch of open houses. You can go, you know, look at vacant houses by yourself, schedule showings, go look, you know, post. I personally don't like when I see agents just posting sold and, you know, put their buyer's faces and their address like that is just cringy to me. But yes, that's just I agree. me. <laughs> but, I agree 100%. Yes, that's so basic, you know. <laughs> right, exactly. But when you have the enthusiasm about it and you're showing like, oh my gosh, look how cool this view is. Or I'm checking out this house today and... Um, you know, what do you think this funny, like unique feature is like, there will be like laundry shoots in some houses and some yes. like millennials have never, you know, had a house with a laundry shoot. Or, <laughs> you know, there might be just like weird, quirky little features to point out. And then also in your stories, you can have interactive questions, you can have polls, you know, everybody loves to like give their opinion, I feel like, and see yes, they do. what other people liked as well. And like, I showed these two houses today. Do you like this dark kitchen or this light kitchen? Or you can even post pictures from Pinterest, like just get houses yes. and put it, gets it out them there. To engage. When you have the polls, it gets people to engage and then you know they're watching your story and they're reading your stuff. It gets them to engage in what you put on there. So I agree with, I love the polls and everything too. So, but that's the thing. There's, it's a whole world in social media land and doing that. So learning all that and knowing, you know, to um, a good post to do, that's going to reach people and just know what it is you like to see and what um, drives you and what gets you in, in um, engaged in someone's post and then do the same thing to build your audience. So that's a great thing. Cause yeah, I'm the same way. There's certain things that I don't like the old school things that I'm not really into. Like I'm not really into door knocking and I know door knocking works for a lot of people. That's not really my thing. And I love people. So it's not that I don't want to go talk to people cause I'll talk to people all day long. But I'm like, I don't want to go to your house and bug you. I don't know. That's just how I think. But it works for a lot of people. So I don't knock it. It's just not my thing. And that's another thing I learned on your podcast was do what's going to resonate with you because then it, you're going to be successful with it. So that's how I, I feel. You know, to me, it's social media. It's being here at the cafe and engaging with the customers and stuff here, um, it, you know, giving little cool things to their little ones or giving out free stuff to get them to come over and talk and meeting people. And that's just how I start to meet different people and engage with others. So those are the things that have worked for me and everyone has to just find what's, what's going to work and click with them. So. Do you have events at the cafe or use that space for anything outside of your typical like cafe spot? So we do have events here. So like Mother's Day, Father's Day, those are the recent things that we had here. We did have, we already knew it was going to be busy just because it was on a Sunday and it's Mother's Day and Father's Day. So we had stuff set up in the terminal to accommodate for, because there was going to be a long wait. So I had um, mimosas for the moms and I was doing that. So I do things like that to keep them all, you know, entertained and excited and happy. And then again, it's courtesy of Jen Jen Real Estate. 
But even when we don't have like a, an event per se, like the summer coming up, I want to have the Kona ice truck come here. And I was even thinking I want to do the Kona ice truck in my neighborhood, do it like right in front of my house and just get my neighbors to engage and come have some Kona ice ice cream on me. And then a lot of my neighbors don't know that I'm a real estate agent. So I want to let them know, hey, come over and have some Kona ice on me and the truck's going to be there. And that's going to, they're going to come to my house. Like, so that's cool. It's like, they're coming to me. So that's another plan that I have for the summer is to have that too. So here at the cafe, but then I also want to do it at my house. Um, so just something fun like that, you know? Um, I just had kind of this vision of like, I think you need a giant cardboard cutout <laughs> of your cartoon logo, like with you and with your super cute bell and heart next to you, like have that next to the Kona truck. So when the people are, you know, grabbing their ice cream, they just see yeah, you. I'm, they I'm, see like, you <laughs> and your logo. Yeah, I'm in person here. I'm in real life. And then there's my my <laughs> cartoon version of me, too. Yeah, we need a life-size Jen Jen. <laughs> oh, I don't know if the world could handle that, but I think you're on to something there, Stephanie. I think that's something to think about. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would actually be really cute and really fun. And um, I don't think, I don't know if I want to do that myself. And it wouldn't work with my... If I'm going to do it, you need to do it too. (laughs) No, my logo is not like a whole body logo. I just have like, you know, my... Oh, it's just a top hat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like a six foot head with arms would just be pretty <laughs> creepy I think well this will this will let everybody know you can have a full body uh, cartoon of yourself because you can make the cartoon whoever you want it to be you know you can you want to be voluptuous or not you can be whatever you want to be <laughs> on your, on your cartoon. <laughs> but you're right you don't want to miss sell yourself and then them see you like, alive and like what but I don't know a, li- a real life person uh, version of myself on a cartoon I got to build up to that one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what no other, like what else would be a tip? Like what would be another way to get involved in the community and add value to people in a way that you would have fun doing it? Like what is something else? Cause I know like there's farmers markets, there's vendor events and standing there awkwardly, like hoping people just come to your table like I, that will yeah. never work for me. And your um, point about like your sister doesn't have to own the cafe for it to work with you. And right. I don't cook at all. So I definitely <laughs> have made friends with the waiters and waitresses and the owners at a cafe down the road from my house. And right. I love going there. And I think, I think they would definitely let me like do stuff there to add value to their customers and they always have a long wait. So I think that's brilliant that you have, you know, books for the kids and reading is obviously super important and to just give kids the exposure to books and something to do while they're waiting for their table. Of course. And I did that. I was doing that for a little while too. Now that it's been the summer, um, I've just been doing candy and stuff out there because I needed to kind of change things up. But I had little um, like not tic-tac-toe games, but things like that that I would print out and put on the bookshelf so that the kids had something to do while they wait. But you're right. You could do that at whatever restaurant you love too. How is that going to hurt the restaurant? It's not. It's only going to make their customers even more happy. And if it's just going to have something on the bottom that says courtesy of Stephanie, like that's, that's cool. It's not hurting anybody. You know, it's not taking away from that restaurant that you like. It's only going to make their customers even more happy and more engaged and, you know, more entertained. So I think it's cool. I think that's a cool thing to do. But so I think you need to think about that one. (laughs) I will. And also, I think another fun idea to entertain the kids while they wait, remember, and I think some restaurants still do it, but you would get like crayons and coloring sheets. What if they color the cartoon version of Jen Jen and, you know, get coloring sheets and or have like different houses or a coloring contest of I did a coloring contest. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I did do that. I did a coloring contest. I printed out just a blank house 
and I put on there, hey, kiddos, Jen Jen Real Estate needs to sell this house, but it's kind of boring and it doesn't look fun and it's not going to sell like this. Can you color it? And I did a coloring contest and then I was told them that I was going to let everyone in the staff here at the cafe pick the winners and then we'd put it on our social media page so that they would follow my social media page and my sister's on the cafe and we would post the winners on there. And then we would post all the kids stuff up on the wall for, I think we did it for a couple of weeks so people could see it, but it's this simple. That was just printing things out and then crayons, but it just was something fun that the kids will do. And who's there with the kids, the parents and there, you know, so it all just ties together. So <laughs> it's a win-win, you know, that is, that is so much fun. Okay. So let's see, we can get fun food items, have it in your neighborhood, have it at a restaurant, have it at an airport, somewhere cool. What else? You mentioned hot chocolate. I wonder if you could have like hot chocolate out in the community somewhere, have like pop up hot why chocolate. Why not? The kids do lemonade <laughs> stands. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm like, um, and I've seen other agents do this too with having set up at a park or something and then just set up to be able to do, a, you know, a market analysis. And if anyone wants to stop by and do that. So there's different options that you can do. It's just a matter of thinking what's going to work for you in whatever neighborhood you're in. I mean, do you have a park that's busy or do you not? But, you know, I see um, uh, my niece, she plays softball. She's uh, nine years old and I've gone to some of her games and I've seen agents that have like a banner or something out there or just Another thing that I feel is really great is just wearing apparel that has stuff. I have a hat that says Gen Gen Real Estate and I have a tank top that says Gen Gen Real Estate and just wearing my own stuff out, wearing it out and about, you know, um, that way it's just always known or even my license plate frame on my car says Gen Gen Real Estate. So, okay, I just stick that on my car and I'm just driving around my own stuff. So I just like to keep it everywhere, everywhere that I go and you know, I also like to go to juice it up. Whenever I'm at juice it up, I always throw my cards out on the counter. <laughs> What's it going to hurt? When I go, I start to see them gone. Now, I don't know if the manager's throwing them out or people are taking them, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I put them out there. So someone's grabbing them, you know, but I'm just always thinking of where I can lay things out to where people are always visiting. And then my information is out there. So it's just always keeping that in the front of our minds to just always market ourselves. Marketing is key. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron. We just take you for a quick commercial break, but I think you guys are gonna think this is super cool. I recently got to interview Pavan Agarwal. He is the founder and CEO of SunWest Mortgage Company, and they have this really cool thing I wanna share with you called Morgan. After years of development, SunWest Mortgage Company, a national leader in mortgage origination and servicing, has launched the newest iteration of proprietary AI platform, Morgan. SunWest's novel application of open ledger technology is groundbreaking and will redefine how real estate sales are transacted. I got to ask him all about this in our interview and the technology is so neat. You don't have to be doing loans with SunWest Mortgage for it to be of value to you, but listen to this. AI technology converts a pre-approved property specific loan to a property agnostic tradable token, like an NFT. I'm still learning about NFTs and he explained it to me in the meeting how this is going to work and how once they approve something, other you only have to get approved once. Other lenders can then bid to do the loan for you after that quick approval. This approach not only opens buyers and sellers to wider opportunities, but empowers all income bracket borrowers with the ability to present offers with certainty without open-ended financing contingencies. Thus, the borrower is now armed with the strength of an all-cash offer that sellers prefer. 99% of thousands of loan conditions SunWest received daily were received within two hours, and over 30% of those were reviewed within only 30 minutes. So whether you need an updated pre-approval at 10 p.m. on a Sunday or instant feedback on guidelines, Morgan is free and available 24 hours a day to cater to your mortgage needs. You wanna try this thing out? Go to usemorgan.com. I asked him about this during the interview. I started using it and started playing around with it. You just go to usemorgan.com and you start having a conversation. Whether you're asking about getting your buyer pre-approved, whether you have a question about a, a buyer that just bought a car and if they're still going to be approved now or how that might change. These guys are doing some really, really cool things in the business. They said in the next six months, they're going to start to get approvals down to within just minutes, like full lender approvals within just minutes using this AI tool, not talking to a person, but like texting things back and forth and working it out. So go check out this new technology, usemorgan.com. 
And I think you have to do it in a genuine way. Like I can tell, I'm sure our listeners can feel your passion and excitement about real estate and being in value add for your community and just doing fun stuff. Like you don't always have to be adding value or even analyzing like their property value. Right. But you can just have fun too. It's okay. Like for my baseball game, the first year I bought out the stadium, I didn't capture any emails, (laughs) (laughs) not a single one. I didn't do anything to um, really market myself well whatsoever. Just everyone was like, oh, yay, a free baseball ticket. And I don't even care. Like, it was so much fun. Right. And, like, I got one transaction out of the deal, and it covered all of my expenses for the day. I mean, I, like, broke even. Right. (laughs) Barely. But because I just didn't do it as well as I could have. I wasn't thinking like a business owner. I was just like, oh, I could give just free tickets. It was just yeah, fun. It was, yeah, so, cool. it was awesome. so much fun. And in that event, you know, some of my friends became entrepreneurs. Like they brought their business to life because they had the opportunity to be a vendor there. And it was like the most fun day ever. And then the second year I did the stadium buyout, Then we directed everyone to my website. You had to fill out a form to get your ticket. And then that went straight to my CRM. So now I have smart. Okay. Yeah. So much smarter than (laughs) the first time. You learn, you learn from those things, you know, so you can't kick yourself. It was a learning situation. Yeah. And you just have to fail forward. And if you're having fun with it anyway, then it's okay. Like you have to get return on investment in your business, but also you can just have fun. It's okay. Like you don't have to see dollar signs everywhere you go. And when you're authentic and true to yourself, it's fine if everything isn't a home run. Like if you're just enjoying yourself and having fun, then who cares? Right. It's the truth. It's the truth. And it's you're still you're still putting your name and everything out there. So in a sense, you still were marketing yourself. Your name was being marketed. It was all courtesy of Stephanie Heiser. So it was still all good, you know, but you're right. You don't have to constantly be like, OK, don't forget to buy from me. Don't forget to you don't want to be like desperate. Just be cool. Just be chill and just. You just, but always be letting people know what you do. And when you see an opportunity, you know, like I said, if I throw some cards out, I'm like, oh, I'm always here. I'm going to throw some cards out. Just do it. Just do what feels right at that moment, you know? And, and then it might not come back to you from that particular place, but it could come to you from some other place, you know, business will start to come to you. So it's just keep it fun. That's the other thing that I have to say is you got to keep it fun because if it starts to be too stressful or, you know, you start to make it um, just too much of a, a stressful thing, then it's you take the fun out of it. Then then what? You know, then you're just a stressful agent. And who wants to go look at houses with a stressful agent? <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be an experience. That's the other thing that I feel it's, it's got to be an experience. I always want it to be an experience with my, uh, my buyers and my sellers. Like I want them to just remember the experience of it. Like, Oh my gosh, that was so cool. That everything was so smooth. It was just fun. She was cool. She, you know, always answering. I just want it to just be an all around good experience. So, and the way for them to know that it'll be a good experience is just knowing your personality beforehand, you know? So, yeah, I think people can pick up on your energy and they can tell if you're just trying to act like you know everything or you think you're better than everyone or Very true. you're just stiff. Like people know, like they want to know that you understand this could be a really stressful situation to them. And, you know, another thing about social media, when people just post like, just sold or congrats to my buyers, or I love, you know, closing day. Well, I love closing day because that's when I get a paycheck. But (laughs) to some of my clients, closing day is when they sold their mom's house after she passed away. 
Yes. And I'm not posting that on social media. I'm not celebrating my paycheck for doing my job right? because to that person, it is not an event to celebrate. And there's, of course, lots of happy, amazing, incredible stories, but like some of the good stories I feel like aren't appropriate to post or brag about because like I've had a single mom come out of a really rough divorce and she bought a house for the first time and she just like was so proud of herself and yeah. just so in shock that she was able to um, pull herself out of a really horrible situation yes. and just become an independent woman and a single mom buying a house is incredible. Like that's really? such a huge accomplishment. Yes. But for me to post like, yay, congrats to my buyers today. I don't know. I just, it feels awkward to me. I probably like overanalyze the situation. No, but you were being mindful of, you know, where she had come from. And then now is that it was a celebratory time, you know, but maybe that was for her to celebrate. You never really know. And sometimes I just judge those types of things based on my relationship with my buyers or sellers and how it, how everything was asking them if they're okay with me posting things. You kind of have to gauge things on what you do on just the feel for each person. Everybody's different. So you just have to kind of feel it out and use your best judgment. Yeah, absolutely. If you have clients that are buying their first house and they're millennials, or if they're really proud of it and you know they're going to post it on Facebook and, you know, I because I don't do a ton of posting on Facebook, I actually had a sold by Steph sign made mm -hmm. for clients who asked me like, when can we do the picture like that says our <laughs> house is sold? I'm like, yes. well, we're not doing it until we have the money in your bank account because we're yes. not jinxing no the jinx anything. <laughs> no <laughs> jinxing, but I had the sign made because they wanted to hold it. And they had a super cute picture from when they bought the house. So it was perfect. And then they moved to another state and I vetted a bunch of agents and made sure I found the best agent for them. And then they took a picture in front of their new house. And that's oh. so, so cute and so special. It's and that so works bad. out. <laughs> yes, it's, it's the, the best, best feeling part. ever. Even, it really is. And it's not about you. It's about them. Like... It is oh, about yeah. you, definitely. In many ways, like I'm proud of my real estate career. I'm proud yeah. of like having the most downloaded episode on real estate rock stars. Like oh, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of those things. Yeah. But it's always mind blowing, and it's you know just about the networking and the connections, and and it's how I met you, and it's how and why I'm sitting here in Austin I in know. Aaron's office yes. working. <laughs> so, so many amazing blessings that have come your way. It's so cool. But it's true. Me listening to you, you resonated something in me. And I'm so thankful that I listened to you that day. And I listened to your podcast over and over. And it just was uh, amazing. And I'm glad that I connected with you. And that's the other thing, too, is it's the people that you connect with along this journey. You know, when you connect with there's agents that I've connected with through, you know, my listing and my buyers or my sellers or whatever. And some are cool. Some are, you know, but the ones that are, I hold on to them. I ask them if I can follow them on social media. And I always want to stay in touch with all these people. And you never know when your paths are going to cross again. And you never know when they're going to put out some piece of advice or some information that could help you. So networking is such a great thing, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. It is fun. It's good stuff. But going back to the excitement and stuff with our buyers and sellers, I, yes, obviously we're all in the business to make money. Making money is our whole goal. Otherwise <laughs> I'd probably just sit at home and eat candy all day or I don't know what I would do. Totally. <laughs> a millionaire. I don't know what people like that do, but I work because I need to make money. But the best thing is when I do have that successful closing, the feeling the feeling when I say an offer got accepted, the feeling when I say that we are closed, funded and recorded, those feelings that you get, they're priceless. 
And I'm thankful every day that I'm in this business and I chose this business and that it's become something successful for me because I get to feel that every time I close a deal and it's just the best feeling ever. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's so amazing. And I'm so glad, you know, that you have so many blessings coming from this as well. And I love also in this business that when someone is awful, you don't have to work with them. Yes. No one is forcing you to right. be like berated by a buyer. Like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't think I'm the agent for you. Right. But this dude, he will be so great. If you <laughs> want to work with him, here's his contact info. And then you're messaging that dude like, Hey, you might get along with this guy. You might hate him. I don't know. But if you work with him, um, give me a 20% referral and there you go. So exactly. exactly. I mean, some people you would never refer out for sure. <laughs> right. Like lose my number, lose my name. Good luck on your selling your house or it's whatever. True. Everybody, you know, people are different, but I always, I'm always cool with you know, there's different personalities out there. The cool ones, I'm always excited to come across. The ones that are a little bit more difficult, sometimes I, I can take on a good challenge, but you're right. There's nothing that's making you have to do anything. If you can refer it out to somebody else that clicks better with a, a strong personality or something that's different that doesn't match with yours, then that's an option too. And that's the beauty of real estate. So you know. yeah, and the beauty of organic lead gen and doing everything that you want and being authentic and being true to yourself, this is how like your vibe attracts your tribe. It's cliche, but I, you know, it's so it's true. Statement. It is a very true statement. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I think because you're so amazing and because you're in so many spaces intentionally, you yeah. really do attract such amazing buyers and sellers. Whereas like my first year, I did a ton of Zillow leads and those are not like the same clients, like my mom's good friends, you know, of when course, I list yes. the house for them, they're extremely grateful and very nice to me. But the random guy from Zillow has no connection to me. So for someone that loves your sister's cafe and loves, you know, they see you, they see all the fun stuff you do. Um, I just think that creates a much better environment for you and your business and everything that you have going on. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I could see that you saw my, my daughter crawling underneath. <laughs> She's getting stuff off the printer. <laughs> That's okay. Just trying to be uh, discreet, but anyhow, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. And then, you know, what's so horrible with me is something simple like that will totally throw me off track. Now I'm like, wait, what was Stephanie just saying? <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. I think that if you have ADD in this business, it totally <laughs> helps you <laughs> be successful. <laughs> It's the truth. I like, oh gosh, something could distract me. It's like, I have to have post-it notes everywhere to remember things. And one small distraction, I'm like, wait, where was I going? What was I doing? Oh my gosh. Because you know, your mind goes in a million different places, but. Yeah, that's how I keep up with all my different escrows. Aside from my escrow <laughs> board and my transaction coordinator, who totally is a lifesaver. I think, honestly, like ADD is kind of a requirement in this job. You know, I'm glad you just said that. I don't know where we are with time, but our tribe is very important. I, I think that's another thing to touch on if this can maybe be in closing or wherever we are with time, but it is so important to just have a good team behind you. My TC is, I lean on her for a lot of things. I love her to pieces and she keeps me solid. She keeps my paperwork in order. I think that's so important. Um, having my title reps that I have good relationships with. They're also so helpful with um, helping me uh, do my postcards and my mailers out after I have a new listing or once I've sold something, they're always so helpful with that. Um, my sister's in escrow. So I'm, you know, I love having her in escrow, but I've also engaged with other, but just having just someone strong like that, that I trust and I go to and knows things when I have questions um, and then having a good handful of lenders to refer to my clients, you know, I don't feel it's a one size fits all when it comes to lenders. So I go based on personalities and just different things that they may or may not need. So having your tribe is very important. We can't do this just by ourselves. We have to have a good team behind us. So I think that's an important thing for agents to remember as well is to build a good team for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. That is a really, really good point to end on. And I 
I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to hear your story and for you to have the platform to share it. And, um, and just, I mean, listeners probably don't know this, but, and I mean, obviously you're working at the cafe, so you're not a full-time agent, quote unquote, and you live your life and you're very involved in your kids' lives, obviously, and you spend a lot of time on yourself and your health and being a wife and yes, being at the cafe and hanging out with your family and having healthy boundaries, but you're still insanely successful and super intentional about everything you do, it seems. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you brought that part up too, because even before coming over here to the cafe with my sister, I was I still am part of a Riverside County Office of Education, and I'm a substitute for office and accounting positions there just to, you know, be there also. And I have been full time there before. I dip out and, you know, I can do part-time assignments when I want, but I've also done that full-time for a period of time while being a very busy agent and a mother. So agents that are out there that are wanting to have a job also, I say it's totally possible and um, I, I you can do it all. You can do it all. It's just time management. Just be very um, organized with your time and your schedule and again, build your tribe, build your tribe to have people helping, you know, through the pandemic. One thing that I found also is that now I have a gentleman that if I can't go out and show houses, there's agents that, you know, you can have them go show houses for you too. I was like, I didn't know agents would do that, but some of the hungrier agents are just starting and wanting to get their feet wet. Um, I've, I found them and they're not even at my office. The gentleman that I use, he's out of KW and I'm not at KW. So I'm like, okay, but he's cool and we're good and it's all good. So that's helpful for me because I am, you know, helping over here at the cafe with my sister. I am a real estate agent, you know, in other areas. And if I can't be out in one area, cause I'm over here, but I don't want my client to be left out and, you know, have to wait for me. You just have to have your tribe built. So working a, a part-time full-time job and being a successful agent is totally possible. Well, you're doing it. You're a woman of many talents. Well, thank you so much for your time and your insight and your energy. You're so amazing. I know people are going to want to reach out to you. So where do they find you? Oh, you can find me on my phone number. Call me. I tell people to call me 951-906-3429. Call me, text me. I have jenjenrealestate.com. Check out my website. You can find me on social media. I have Jen Jen Real Estate on Facebook and Instagram. I would love to connect with other agents and I love to help other agents as well. If you have questions or just want someone to bounce things off of, that's what I have my Stephanie for. I love to call her and just say, hey, this is what I have. Tell me what you're thinking or what your thoughts are on this. And I think every agent should have other agent friends that they connect with. So please call me. I would love that. Absolutely. And same for me. Steph Heiser does real estate on Instagram. I love to connect with everybody and I just end up being in touch with the most amazing people ever. So thank you, Jen, for coming on today. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm glad that I was here. This was awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you, Real Estate Rockstars, for listening. We appreciate you as always. All right, real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Muchastegui jumping in again to thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully you guys loved listening to that one. And I wanna make sure that you know about all of the extra resources that we have. And also we need your help. They say podcasts are free. You get to listen to podcasts for free. But what is the cost of that podcast? I would say if I could beg you to pay anything for that podcast, I would say the cost of the podcast is going and giving a review. So whether you download it on Google or Apple or YouTube or anywhere else, please go give us a review. Say what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us get better guests. The more reviews, the higher we get in the rate rankings. Right now, we are the biggest podcast out there for real estate agents. And we want to keep that spot because we know there's lots of podcasts out there. So go give us a review. Also, be sure to go to hybendigital.com. If you liked any of the resources that those real estate agents talked about, we've got a huge video vault of those resources for free. 
every penny that comes on the podcast that we interview, they give us something that helps them get their deals or helps them work with their clients. And we put that in the toolbox in our vault for you. So go to hybendigital.com and you can get it. If you're looking for real estate education, go to rebusuniversity.com. We have all sorts of courses in there to help agents succeed in real estate, how to get the listing, how to negotiate deals, you know, how to become an investor, all sorts of different stuff, rebusuniversity.com. And if you want to chat with me, go find me on Instagram. And if you come find me on Instagram, you can send me messages. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. We try to put a bunch of content out there too. You can find me in two different places. It's at rerockstars.com for our Real Estate Rockstars page or at erinamuchastegui.com for my personal Instagram page where I can chat with you about all sorts of different things. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.